Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Talk Tuesday. Um, thank you for coming along today. I still remember the question that Chris asked us two weeks ago. What is the most common used for tools? And many of us had a go at what we thought was, but Chris reminded us it is actually the browser. So it's great to have Chris with us today because I know he usually has another um, appointment or a group that he works with at this time. So it'll be wonderful to hear Chris talk to us and share with us on that humble browser, which is a tool that we all use, but probably abuse as well. I'm Anne Merchant, I'm a teacher in Country Western Victoria, Australia. So it's great to have you with us today. So maybe we go down one by one and just introduce ourselves if you've got a microphone. Um, and when we get to Jenny, Jenny, we'd love to hear where you are and why you are where you are. So Chris, let's start with you. Would you like to introduce yourself? Okay, hi ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and the millions of people that will be watching the recording over the next hundred years, including the social history historians. Um, I'm now sitting in my house, actually, my home office in Chiang Mai, which is about an hour's flight north of Bangkok. And uh, before, I, I've been in Thailand now for, for 10 years in this uh, consultancy type support role for educational technology uh, across Southeast Asia. Uh, and before I was here, I was working with the English Schools Foundation, which is a group of actually 20 now international schools in Hong Kong. And I was head of their professional development center and the IT uh, director there for all the uh, 16 schools as it was then. Brilliant time, actually. I, uh, growing up while the internet was growing up was a magical experience. Next. Okay, next is Mark. Mark, do you have a microphone? Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, morning, everyone. It's um, 7 o'clock here on a very, very dull, cloudy um, Tuesday morning in London. Um, I'm a bit sleepy, so just bear with me for a second. Um, I work with children, usually 9 and 10 year olds, helping them with their maths and English. And sometimes I do a bit of um, helping with ICT and all those other things. Um, that's much it really. Thank you, Mark. Golly, do you have a microphone? If so, you click on the talk button up the top left hand corner, say hello and then click off it or on it again to switch it off. So we'll just see if Golly has a go at that. Hello? Are you hearing me? Yes, Carly, we can hear you very well. So, would you like to tell okay. us what, what you yeah. Go ahead and tell us where you're from good and morning. what you do. Good, good morning. Uh, I'm from Israel. I'm talking from uh, Ranana, from Open University of Israel. And um, it's 9 in morning, Tuesday morning. A very lovely day. Um, I'm going to um, to be a system um, a administrator of MOOC courses uh, within two months, and uh, I wanted to learn more uh, about browsers. Uh, thank you for uh, very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Golly. It's great to have you with us. Jenny, would you like to tell us where you're from? And if Henrietta can share your mic, we'd be great to hear her too. Hello everyone. I'm actually from Bendigo in Victoria, but I'm over here doing a UK Ed travel trip with Henrietta Miller. And where we've come from London yesterday up to Blackpool. And the sun, the sun is shining and it's blue sky here in Blackpool. Apparently there's going to be a tropical heat wave and it may even reach 22 today. So um, I didn't bring sunscreen though, which could be a worry. Um, so um, this is great because um, we've been awake since 4 a.m. and now it's 7, uh, 7 a.m. So we've been able to catch up. So thank you very much, Anne. We're interested to see 
and hear about the Humble Browser. And here's Henrietta to say hello. Hello everybody, it's Henrietta Miller here. I'm a primary school teacher um, from Roseville in Sydney. And I first met Jenny at a conference many years ago. And we connect, obviously, with, through Twitter and other ways. And we're having a great time. We're off to visit two primary schools to, today. And we're really looking forward to meeting classes and students who are blogging together. And we have uh, dinner tonight with David Mitchell, the um, founder of Quad Bloggers. And Quad Blogging is a great initiative for primary schools. And I'm extra specially looking forward to that. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for all being with us. Okay, Peggy had login issues. Sorry, um, I hope that wasn't a fault that I gave you a wrong room link. Peggy, I don't know if you've caught your breath, and if you'd like to introduce yourself, please. Okay, um, how about we just go to the next screen then? Because we first of all started to draw where we are. So someone's obviously got a cloudy day. Someone's quite happy for it to be Tuesday by the look of it. Um, but we'll just go on to this world map because I don't want to waste too much time. I want to hear what Chris has to say um, about the Humble Browser. So if you look at this toolbar, which is to the left of the screen, down the bottom you'll see a little clip art picture. If you click on that, it will take you to click art. If you choose the common symbols tab um, in that, you can actually click on that and tell us where you are um, in the world. So let's see if you all understood that. So if you click first of all on the clip art, click on common symbols. Oh, someone's very smiley today. <laughs> Hang on, you've covered up where we are. And hello, Joshy. Nice to have you with us. Um, right, I'm in there, so I've got to go back in and do it again, too. <laughs> um, I guess that was Henrietta and Jenny being so happy not to be here in cold Australia. That's where I'm from. So let's have a look. Do we all get our symbols on there? Um, so that would be London and Israel. How did you go, Golly? What you need to do is look on the left of the whiteboard for this toolbar. And when you see the toolbar down the bottom, as you click with your mouse, it says place clip art on the page. So if you click on that, um, you can see a window come up and you need to click on common symbols. Oh, is there no toolbar on the iPad? Okay, so Mark at least has put where you're from. Oh, we've got Israel there too. Wonderful to have the global audience. It is, Peggy. I am the only one in Australia, would you believe? Even though Jenny and Henrietta are from Australia. So, how do we all go? Do we all get our little marker on? So, without further ado, I love listening to Chris. He's such an amazing, inspirational person. Oops, I did not go to that one yet. Um, so uh, highly knowledgeable in so many areas. So Chris is, Chris is going to talk to us about the Humble Browser, which we use how many times a day? I would love to know. So Chris, I don't know if you're going to ask our participants which browser they use first and foremost. Um, Chris, did you want them to put that in the chat? Anyway, I'll leave it to you. you you're, uh, thank you very much for coming. Let's give Chris a, a round of applause. And Chris, we really look forward to that humble browser, how we abuse and use it. Okay. Uh, how's, the, how's the quality of the sound, ladies and gents? Give me a mark out of 10. 10 is good, and 0 is you can't hear me at all. <laughs> Stupid question, really. <laughs> oh, that's good. Brilliant. Great. I'm using a USB headset on here. Although I have made a mistake in the past, and I'm sure many webinarers have in the past, of uh, plugged in their USB headset and your laptop doesn't acknowledge it and you end up using the built-in mic without realizing it. Uh, that's happened before. How do we get rid of that gray area on the screen? I think the gray area is because I have, I'm covering it with one of my, let me just sort out my, 
windows here, so I'm not covering it up. So my first question is, can you see my browser? Can you uh, see my yes. browser? Well, we can okay. see your page on the off series in Shambles pad. Is that correct? Yep, that's it. Uh, okay, let me copy this. Copy, let me put this in. Now, I just want to tell you what this is before uh, we, we really get going on the content, is that what's in front of you now is a back channel tool that I use an awful lot. And it's uh, one I uh, have set up myself. Well, actually, somebody set it up for me. And I instigated the setting up of this one. The, uh, uh, the browser, it, this works in any browser. It's a back channel tool. Now, we're not going to use it really in this session because we already have a back channel tool. We have the chat there on the side. Um, but what I've done already, in case we miss it, is all of the URLs that I mention, uh, I've thrown in here. And if I scroll down, you can see there's just a whole load of URLs here, some of them which look horrendous. And I'll t tell you why there's some horrendous looking URLs there. The fact that it has uh, uh, Evernote at the front here might be a, gu a guide. Uh, and there's some stuff at the bottom which I think we won't get to. Um, how I planned this, I sat down a couple of days ago and I thought, what would I do? And I just went through uh, different websites. And so everything I'm going to do is in a browser. And what I did is I thought, right, I'm going to use these sort of 20 different places. And I bookmarked them. And and I think I'm going to be interested to know what your your experiences are. But many people, when I look at their browsers, often the bookmarks are just one gigantic list, and they're not organised. And, and and so people haven't put time into actually organising your bookmarks, which is a bit sad because bookmarks are very are very powerful. Um, so let me tell you one, but, but <laughs> okay, Jenny, you're right, make a good live binder. But what I did here, you can see along the top, my, my bookmarks bar. And uh, I've got one here which says workshops. Now you can see how well organized I am. Actually, I, there's an irony here. I'm well organized on the web, but if you saw my desk now in the real world, it's a real tip. Um, I'll come back. At, I'll come back to what browser I'm using in a minute um, here. Um, but what I'm doing now is generic. For, for most of the browsers look very similar. But you see, I have, I have a bookmarks bar here, and I have one folder called workshops, and I have a folder there called browser workshop. And on the right, you should have, you should see now all the links I'm going to use in this session uh, are all listed there. Oh, the, maybe the pop-up. You're not seeing the pop-up. I think you're not. I think the pop-up is not showing then. Oh, you're right. It won't be showing. It will be grey. So just imagine that grey area is the list that's come up in this browser workshop folder. Um, but if I clicked when I came in here a few minutes ago, I went to this and I right-clicked on it, and you may not even be able to see this, um, but a pop, there's a pop-up. Yeah. Okay. I'll explain the pop-ups. <laughs> Golly, you're grey all over. Well, you're in Blackpool. That's what Blackpool does to you. Um, open all book, so you can't see it. It's grey, but you, so you have to trust me that in the pop-up window that just came up, there's an option which says Open all bookmarks. So when I started five, ten minutes ago, I just went to here, clicked on Open all bookmarks, and it opened these twenty odd bookmarks without me going through and and doing it. Oh, sorry. Golly, yes, you're in Israel. Well, luckily. No, Blackpool's okay. Let me close these then. Let me go back. So the, the point of what I've just done then is to say that maybe the first learning experience here, if nothing else, if you're working with colleagues, I think if nothing else, the underused power of bookmarks is, is amazing. Uh, it's a bit of a hassle setting them up in the first place. 
and I'm not going to show in the different browsers how to set them up, but it's a bit of a hassle to set them up in the first place. But once you've done that, it's you, you can save yourself loads of time because you could have a folder of bookmarks for every topic. If you're a physics teacher, you could have a folder of bookmarks on Newton's laws, a folder on electric circuits. And so when you go into a class, then you just click on the folder, say open all the bookmarks, and of course you can add bookmarks at any time, open all the bookmarks and it opens them all up. Bearing in mind also, and I'm not going to go through the nitty gritty of how you do some of these things, um, you can, that's, that's why Google's here. Um, the bookmarks, if you're using Google Chrome, and I'm using Google Chrome here, or whether you're using Firefox, or whether you're using Internet Explorer, they all have the ability to sync. So I'm on my uh, MacBook Pro now, my laptop, but these bookmarks I have across the top here, all these bookmarks, or lots of grey flashing squares must have appeared then for you. All these bookmarks I've got, if I change them, they automatically change and sync in my bookmarks on my uh, Windows laptop in Safari and on my desktop, which is also Windows, in Safari. So all the bookmarks I have listed on the page would open at once. You're, you're absolutely right, Peggy. And I feel a number of people don't appreciate that because it's an amazing time saver. Um, I can go into all sorts of things I've done in the past. If I'm doing a workshop on podcasting, I have a folder in bookmarks which says podcasting. It has about 20 pages there, and I just click open all the pages in that folder, and it opens them all up in individual tabs. I am surprised. I, I, isn't that surprising? I th I really think that to do a sort of an induction with teachers and kids on using browsers um, is is worthwhile, even if it was just for the importance of, of bookmarks. But I have to I have to smile. I and and I was a victim of this years ago. Uh, was you just keep adding bookmarks. You keep adding bookmarks. And incidentally, to add a bookmark here, let me just uh, go up to here. You can see where my pointer is now next to the URL in the URL uh, form there. My folder, my, I'm, it's, there's a little icon there, it looks a little folder icon. To put this into my bookmarks, I just drag that down and drop it in the area I wanted to go. I just drag this down. I'm not going to do it, but I'm, I just right click, uh, left click and drag it down and drop it onto my bookmark bar. Or I drag it down into a folder, and you're just going to see another grey area if I click here, but I just grab that and go down and go to the folder I want to, it's gone grey for you I'm sure, and then drop it in that folder. So that's how you have bookmarks. Some people have bookmarks by using, uh, by right clicking and there's an option there I think which says add bookmarks. Okay, so, yeah it works in Peggy, it works in, this bookmarking thing works in all browsers. Interestingly enough, I have Google Chrome here. Um, maybe I should just just uh, confirm that I think some people think you can only have one browser. On my page here, I could have uh, um, Google Chrome open, which is open now. I could have Google Firefox. Uh, Google Firefox. I could have Firefox open at the same time. I could have um, Apple's. Uh, Safari browser open as well. I could have Internet Explorer open as well. And we'll look at all of those and see how they're being used around the world in a minute. Yeah, Peggy, and I think a lot of people don't realize you can have more open than just the one. I think they feel that, well, it used to be people would accept Internet Explorer when they opened up Windows. Um, the other thing that's interesting um, is that if you are a Google Chrome user and then you open up Firefox, and you open up Firefox, then um, Firefox will say, do you want to import all of your bookmarks from um, from Google Chrome? So all these bookmarks I've got here, if I open up a new, install a new version of Firefox, but I've got one already, then it would say, do you want to import all the bookmarks? But it doesn't sync them. Now there is a service which syncs bookmarks across all the different browsers. I've forgotten the name. It will pop up in the next half an hour, I'm sure. 
35 minutes, I'm sure. Does the folder sync from one browser to another? No, it doesn't. It syncs from one Chrome browser on one machine to one Chrome browser on another, or it syncs from, golly, from one, internet, uh, from one Firefox browser to another Firefox browser. Oh, and what I should make clear, I'm saying it's synced, but I'm signed in. I'm actually, you have to sign in. So I'm actually signed in to, to this with my Google account. Um, with Google Chrome. So you have to be signed in. And that's a nice thing as well. If you went to a machine in your computer lab, if you have a computer lab, then and you sign in using your Google account, then you have the option of syncing all the browsers. And also down the bottom, I see, let me open it up again here. And I have a feeling you might not see this. If I open up a brand new browser, Okay, I've opened, I just clicked on the right and I've opened up a brand new tab, not a brand new browser. I've opened up a tab. Down here, there's a button, and I think this is a pop up. You're not going to, I bet that's grey, isn't it? Is that grey? Oh, you can see that, okay. So you can see there all the tabs I've recently closed, which is useful here. Uh, you sh uh, uh, a lot of teachers close tabs I've seen and they go, oh, I've lost that, what was it? But if you go down to recently closed, you can find them and reopen them again. And the other one I like here is other devices. This, ta this tab here, uh, this link here is telling me the tabs I've got open in Google Chrome, but Firefox has a similar thing, in Google Chrome um, on other devices, and that says up here it says Shambles Guru HP. That's my desktop machine, which I switched on apparently about, or it checked about 24 minutes ago. And you see, these are actually the tabs. I'm on my laptop, my MacBook laptop, but these are the tabs that are open at this very moment on my desktop machine. So that's a good way of, of, of also saving time without writing something on it. How many times you've written something on a piece of paper from one machine and then gone and typed it on another machine? So that's that. So let me go through these now. Um, so this back channel tool, and you can set up your own back channel tool if you go to shamblespad.com. It's free and uh, it's a collaborative writing tool. And I just did it quickly so I had a record of all the all the URLs I open. So feel free to use that and add things in here if you want to. Um, I use this a lot with students and on all my workshops I have a back channel tool and it's usually this one or because this one didn't used to work on mobile devices and does now or the other one I use a lot and I suspect you'll know this is today's meet. Maybe somebody could type in the URL for today's meet as another back channel tool but I'm not, not going to do that. Okay so that's uh, let me go across the tabs. Okay, this, uh, actually what would be good is if, to save me doing it, is if, uh, thank you, Ryan. Let me, I'll, I'll copy some of these in as I go through. This was just uh, an interesting um, web page, which if you go to it, it tells you what browser you're using if you don't know. So I'm using Chrome 27, the most current version of Chrome. A word of warning, there is a there is a version which is more current than the current version. That's an oxymoron, isn't it? It's more current than the current version, but it's a developer's version. It's a beta version and sometimes not stable. So if you get that ever get that option, don't don't upload it. And it's giving you links here to try other uh, ones. It's saying you've got Chrome, Chris, do you want to have to try Firefox? Do you want to try Opera, do you want to try um, uh, Safari? Some people think that uh, uh, Apple Safari doesn't work on Windows. It does. And down here, if you were doing something with uh, first timers, well, this is just basically telling you what a browser is, which is a bit of a no brainer, really. Of course, if you are a school, which is which has laptops which are Chrome laptops. Nearly everything you're doing is in a browser anyway. Is there anybody here using Chrome laptops in their school? 
Well, thanks for that, Mark. I'll check that out. I don't know that. I haven't seen that site before. Oh, you, you brilliant. So this, if you're using Chrome, a Chrome laptop, then you've probably got, I don't know if you've got an option of using other browsers. They want, uh, Google obviously want you to use the, uh, theirs. Right. Let me go through these even more. Now, I thought for this first, for the next 10 minutes, I'm going to have a, I'm going to try and do two things. Um, rather than be prescriptive, <laughs> okay, Mark, I'll, 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 Microsoft have to use that site to tell everyone else. There is a, there's a lovely joke sign which says, it, it, I think this is unfair on, on Microsoft and Internet Explorer, but you know, there's a joke going around that say, Internet, Internet Explorer, the best browser to download another browser. <laughs> which I think should be. I think Internet Explorer had a lot of bad press years ago. I think it's up there running quite well with everybody else now. Um, now, I thought I'd, I'd, I'd do a bit of serendipity for myself here to make it more interesting for me rather than being prescriptive. And what I'm going to go th do now for the next 10 minutes is I'm going to go, th and by the end of this, by the way, I'm going to finish off with the iPad and focus on browsers and the iPad. Um, I thought I'd do a bit of, yeah, it does have a bit of, of a bad rap. Anyway, let's, let's go through this magical mystery tour. I'm going to look at several curation sites and where it, information on the web is curated, another no-brainer, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and see what they tell us about browsers. Now, probably the biggest curation site on the web is Google. So, so let's have a look to see what Google comes up with. And incidentally, I should say, I'm logged in. And something to remember when you're logged in to your Google account, that the search results you get are not the search results that the rest of the world gets. The search results you get are, are customized to you. Um, they're not the, what the world sees. But I reckon if you, if you did this yourself, you, you'll see uh, much of what I see. Uh, so we've got uh, we've got a couple of ads that come up first of all. Oh, and look at that for the word browser. We only had uh, one, just over one billion U.S. billion. That is not an English billion. An English billion is twelve noughts, and an American billion is nine noughts. Right? Put me right if 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 you think I'm wrong. So it's got one American billion results for the word browser. So boys and girls and children, I'd like you to investigate those for the next forty years and report back later. <laughs> what what I find strange sometimes is that you do have lots of results here, and there'll be some good ones, and Wikipedia is a good place to start, possibly. Uh, uh, these are adverts at the top, which are slightly, they've got a yellow background, and I'm not sure if you see that. Um, but what surprises me sometimes is that this is the page people focus on when they're doing searches. when for something like this, I suspect that if we click on images, and if you were a visual learner, then just doing that makes it a much richer experience, especially maybe for younger children, if you were searching for volcanoes, to look at the image results rather than the uh, pure text results um, can be uh, much better for their, for their learning. And keep in mind that every one of these links, every one of these pictures are coming from a web page. Um, so, for instance, um, there's, there seems to be a number of comparisons here. And if we went off to those web pages and you do a right click and you say open it in a new tab or just save the image, and you, you may be more likely to find something that would be of interest. Let me just look down here. Wow, that looks almost like a, a gaming type site there. Let me just look down here a bit, see if there's anything of interest. See, here's an interesting one, browser usage. So I have a feeling that if I was looking for information about browser usage, I'd find it more quickly by looking at these images rather than by looking through the text search of a single word. Although, we don't want to get into search here, we, we want to focus on browsers. Um, so here's a, a site, and actually I've got that already. 
I think it was just I think it was just browser I used. Let me just look at the top of the page. Peggy. Yeah, there we go. Browser. Uh, so I don't I think we won't stay on anything else. Here's something else which which seems to have statistics about the use of browsers. I'm not sure about that. I, I was suspicious of that because it says Safari is used the most, then Google Chrome, then Opera, then Firefox, then Internet Explorer. There's some interesting graphics here. Isn't there? Look at all of this. Some statistical use there. So if I wanted that. And the aim of this session here is to give you ideas to go away and play yourself rather than give you definitive answers. Um, but that looks like it'd be a great site. And it says news at CNET, which is a, a good site, for finding statistics about browser use. I'd like going through the images in image search more than the text. Um, so let me leave that now. I'm not going to go into that anymore. I suppose actually this would be the good time to say, what's your favorite browser? Can you type your favorite browser into chat? Firefox, Chrome, IE10, Chrome. Yeah. yeah, Firefox has a plugin, and then we could have a whole hour about plugins. Firefox, Firefox, oh, interesting. I switch between Chrome and Firefox personally. I have a leaning towards Chrome, uh, but my reason for that is I'm living in North Thailand, and the connectivity isn't brilliant. Actually, it's getting better. And I find that Chrome is the fastest to load for me. But there are other things that might affect how fast things open and how pages open. It might be something else, not just the, the browser. And the other thing I like about Chrome is, and I may be wrong, and there's a there's a danger of this is you get out, you, you know you, you're wrong a lot of the times because you you can't keep up. But I as I understand it. If a website goes wrong in a tab in Chrome, it will just freeze that tab or that tab will crash without affecting the other tabs. Whereas I understand in others, like Internet Explorer, if you have a, a tab and something goes wrong in that tab with the website and it, the, the flash doesn't run or, or the JavaScript or whatever funny things are in the page, causes it to hang, it causes the whole browser to hang rather than that tab. Now, it might be wrong, but from my experience, that's what I found has happened, and I did read it once somewhere. Um, so Chrome is my favorite, although I've been using Firefox a bit more recently. So let's move on. I'm, keep, I'm keeping an eye in chat. Remember, please don't just ask questions when you're doing it. Add your experiences into there. Um, actually, I know some schools that actually say, they stipulate, you can only use this browser. And often it's because somebody once said, oh, it's a more, it's a more secure browser. But, and the interesting thing is that they're all quite secure. And you can even, oh, I wasn't going to, I really forgot to mention this. If I uh, open up a new browser here, I think, Somewhere here, I can open up a browser, which is a tab, sorry. If I open up a new tab, I can open up a tab, which is an anonymous tab, so no, nothing's following you at all. It's not called anonymous. What is it called? It's called something else. I can't remember where it is. Where do I open up? I thought I wrote right-clicked up here. No, I... Oh. Here we go. Is that grey, or can you read that drop-down menu? OK. All I did was, I'll read it to you, is I'm, an, I'm, I'm on Chrome, remember, there's this, which says customizing, is, is a customizable button here. And if I click on there, there's a drop-down menu. And one option, it says, and you have to take my word for it, unless you're doing it on the side yourself, it says, 
new incognito window, which opens up a window where it doesn't actually save your history, it doesn't accept cookies, it's completely anonymous. And so if you worry about privacy, open up a incognito, I-N-C-O-G-N-I-T-O window. I said, there's a keyboard shortcut, which I think on the Apple is Shift Command N. Okay, let's move on. Where were we here? Mystery tour. Okay, the other place, we're just spending a few minutes here going through different curation sites to find what it's what they're saying about browsers. There's YouTube, you do, you do YouTube, of course. Actually, I'm, as I uh, get older, I tend to be using, I tend to be using YouTube more than Google. Okay, so this is my account, youtubecom guru. Um, and let's see what they come up with. What does YouTube come up with? So, first one, interesting. So here we got 1,000, 1,200,000 results. First one, what is a browser? Four years ago, 800,000 views, two and a half minutes. What have we got here? This one was a year old. Let's filter it, actually. Let's filter it by um, how many people have viewed them. View count. Chrome, Google Chrome speed tests is three years old, being viewed by eight million people, uh, eight million times. Hmm. Usually, the largest views is is the most valuable to look at. We're not going to look at any of these. I'm just really thinking aloud and looking myself. Let's filter, if anybody, what? Let's filter videos about browsers that were only uploaded this month. Oh, there's a new one here, Next Browser. I don't know about that one. Samsung Galaxy S. Browser speed comparison reviews. Okay, I'm going to stop on that now. I'm not going to go through any more of those. The danger is getting sucked in. How many of us have done this sort of game and you suddenly open your eyes and it's two hours later and time to go to bed? Peggy's saying, would kids use a private browsing option to keep teachers from monitoring where they've been? <laughs> Good point, Peggy. Um, I'm, in that situation, I'm never sure whether to praise the student for using their initiative or to ask them, why don't you want me to know where you're going? Um, <laughs> at least, Peggy, you were kind and you didn't say, I wonder how many husbands go to porn sites that they don't want their wives to know or girlfriends to know about, right? It's... Uh, but let's not stay on that. Let's move. <laughs> let's move. Let's move on. <laughs> Another place where I find uh, it useful to uh, for information, literally just search for things, is Scoop It. Scoop It's one of my favourite uh, areas. Let's see if anybody's written anything about browsers. Browsers in Scoop It. I'm actually signed in here. Now, if we're lucky, we've got, right, that's interesting, I did browsers rather than browser, I wonder why. So there's 4,000 people have scooped, have put links to browsers. Um, let's scroll down a little bit. So this person has scooped about browsers, John Evans, into a scoop it called iPads in Education. This one has scooped something about browsers in public relations. Hmm. These all seem a bit commercial, don't they? Freak in the cage web design. Free technology for teachers. The new version of Google Forms has finally arrived. So that's something about browsers, but Google Forms. And that's in a, 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 a scoop it all about iPads in education. That might be worth following up. Let me scroll down quickly. Oh, here we go. Here's an interesting one. Browser malware. So this person, May Clinton, has scooped 
this link into her scoop it with the topic browser malware. I bet if we looked in this more, we'd find somebody has actually created a whole scoop it about browsers. But again, my, my reason for doing this is just to raise awareness of an approach to finding information. Let's say goodbye to scoop it. Jenny, interesting. I'm reading what you're saying about sharing history with parents. And yet you're not. Okay. Live binders. Oh, I, there's a few live binder evangelists in the room here. Um, you uh, to save time, I'm not even going to search. Go to browsers, and you may well find that somebody's got a live binder or a, a tab in a live binder all about browsers. And once you find that, the trick is to find somebody who keeps updating it and keeps up to date and puts the time in to research it so that we don't have to do that. That's the trick, isn't it? It's to find the people who are curating who are doing that work for you. They used to be called librarians, but we're all librarians now. Pearl Trees is another one. I don't know if you've, uh, I don't know why I keep saying that. Uh, browsers, browsers, let's have a look here. Uh, Peggy, no, you scoop it, you can put anywhere. It's not chronological. When you first add a, uh, a new link to a scoop it topic, it goes at the top, but you can just drag it down and put it anywhere you like in your list. And even if it's gone onto the third page, you can bring it and drag it to the front page. Uh, it's actually not hard to move them at all. There's one button on there. Sorry, I'm going to go back and answer that. Uh, scoop it. If I go to my topics, yeah, you have to be logged in, and it has to be your topic, of course. So let me go to my topic. I've got a topic here. Did you really know? And to move scoop it, uh, wrong one, because this one is heavily, a lot of graphics in this one. May not be a good one to choose. This button here, Peggy. Okay, Mark, thanks for thanks for dropping by. Uh, that button there in Scoop It will allow you to move this Scoop It to anywhere you want in your whole uh, list of Scoop It's. So in browsers, let's, uh, in Pearl Trees, let's look here. Oh, it's come up already. Let me get rid of this. And this is an interesting one. We've got a central browsers issue, and then browser games, browsers, browser choices, browser tools browser web, responsive browser emulators, browsers and search tools. And if you click any of these, then it will come up with uh, e even more. I'm going to move on quickly. This is taking a bit more time. Pinterest, there's another one I was going to look at, but I'm not going to. There's a website here. Remember, all these URLs are in that back channel tool from the beginning which is the link is in the beginning of chat here. So here's uh, reviews. A uh, lot of statistics here if you're interested. What browsers are around? Here Google Chrome seems to come to the top. Firefox second and Internet Explorer third. Opera fourth. Safari fifth. There's some other ones that I'm not sure of. Very, very quick because you can look at these yourself. This one we looked at earlier, browser usage and which countries are using which browsers. Keyboard shortcuts could be a whole five or ten minutes. For instance, how many people using a browser know that if you press the space bar, you go down a screen in your browser? So instead of scrolling down using the bar on the right-hand side, you can just press the space bar. Lots of, lots of shortcuts, and many of them are, not all, but 90% of them are the same across different browsers. I think, Peggy, in answer to you, why browsers vary by countries, maybe if the country is a heavy Microsoft user, then maybe Internet Explorer becomes a big one. Uh, I would think something like that, maybe. I, I, the answer is I don't really know. Um, the space bars are really, it's really good, it's really useful to save you scrolling down. Uh, here's another site, which I think is a little bit better. 47 keyboard, 
keyboard shortcuts that work across all browsers. And we could talk about browsers, and we have to be careful here not to mix browsers and search engines because it's a grey line between browsers and search engines, isn't it? It's it's easy to get into into both because this URL place at the top here, this place to, to type in at the top, this box, is actually on Chrome, your search bar as well, uh, where in, in uh, Firefox it's separate. But this is a, a site which is uh, a browser which is, you download it and it's designed to be more student friendly. Now I'm not using one of those and I've very rarely seen them used. Is anybody using children specific browsers? I think you're right, Peggy. I think Safari is trying to move towards that. Even, even though they have two there, sometimes it does work as search. No, I've never used the kid fav, favorite browsers. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'd love to talk to some people who are using them. So if you ever find anybody, let us know who's, who's using them. I would guess for very young children where you really want to a lot of control and also they tend to be very graphic with big buttons and the navigation tends to be a bit simpler. Okay, let's move on. No idea why. I think I put Hootsuite there because I was going to talk about plugins on the top right hand corner. But I'm not going to do that because I want to move into the um into the iPad. Um, on Shambles of course there's a whole area on browsers, lots of information. You, you could read through that yourself. I've got an, another a bit of information about offline browsing. Uh, used to be an issue when the internet was really bad. With connectivity now, offline browsing doesn't seem to be... I'll check that out, Peggy. Did, sweet search. Um, um, but offline browsing used to be more of an issue when the internet was not particularly reliable. It doesn't seem to be so much now. Um, but there are options here, ways of of doing searching and having them saved offline so that when students come in they find them quickly. But not such an issue anymore. Well, that's the, just a Wikipedia page about offline browsers. And plugins, we could have a whole hour about plugins, different plugins. We're not going to do that. The only plugins I've got on here is one to uh, uh, Evernote, and if I click on that, it will put this page or something I've highlighted into Evernote. Buffer is a way of scheduling tweets. So if I wanted to tweet this page, but I wanted it to go later, then I could click on there. This is Bitly, which is a URL shortener, and this is Hootsuite here. What are those traffic lights top left of my browser? Oh, these are um, crows. These are I'm on a Mac, remember. So these are close, close the browser, minimize the brow browser, or maximize the browser. Those are the, those are the traffic lights. <laughs> now I'm going to go live to my, to my uh, iPad. Um, so let me tell you how I did this. These are screenshots from my iPad, and they're in tabs, as you can see. And let me just tell you how I, how I, now I'll show you, I'll show you when I go on my iPad, how I got these into a browser. Um, but I want you to keep me on track in the last few minutes here. Um, we're going to look, look on browsers in the iPad. We're going to, I have, this is my front page on my iPad. There are browser folders here, three browser folders. We're also going to have a quick look at the iPad Safari browser, some things I want to highlight there. We're going to look at what else quickly here. I'm going to look at the Bing browser. I'm going to look at oh, loads of browsers here. And we're not going to look at them all. And we're going to look live at browsers on the iPad which play Flash files which are these. I'm going to do this live. We're going to look at Google's browsers because there are a couple here. 
in Google. I'm going to do this live in a second. Please don't let me finish without telling you how to make an app on the iPad in 10 seconds. And that's it. Now I'm going to stop sharing now and I'm going to bring up my iPad. No, maybe 15 seconds. So I want to stop sharing now. Reload, reload, let me minimize that. Take that out of the way. And stop sharing. Um, application sharing. Stop that. And now let me boot up my iPad. I'm using Reflector to mirror my iPad to Windows. And now let me go back to application sharing. Again, I'm still here. Uh, right, application sharing. Hosting is paused. And I need to click on something. Resume stop sharing. Okay, let me go back to stop sharing. And now start sharing. Here we go. Reflector iPad. Share. Now sharing reflector. And let me move these boxes out of the way so you don't have a grey area. Move that out of the way. Okay. I'm hoping now you can see my you can see my iPad. Is that right? I said Bing. Okay, you can see my iPad. <laughs> okay, oh, look at that, the time's nearly up. Drat. Okay, so what am I going to go through here? I'm going to look at uh, my first screen, and I realize there'll be a bit of a lag delay there. <laughs> okay, let me go through this. Maybe. Uh, that's a good strategy if I go over a little while. It's like I'm going to, my time is atrocious. Let me look at my browsers here. I've got Bing here. I'm not going to demonstrate it anymore. Bing is an interesting browser which is incorporated to the Bing search engine. And it actually has a nice search interface which puts searches into, into it groups them into areas of interest. Um, so have a look at that. There's two here which are both three dollars each but are free if you download them today and this one it's difficult for you to see I suspect it's called sandbox which allows you to control to limit if you if it's students to limit which sites they can go to and there's another one here called rabble browser which allows you to and I with more time I'd have demonstrated it but I'm not going to which would have allowed you to um, uh, have multiple iPads in a room all sharing their their browser, their searches and their bookmarks with one central iPad. And they're both free today. 
If you do a Twitter, I tweeted about them last night. If you our series, if you Twitter for that hashtag, if you search for that tweet, you'll find a couple of tweets from me last night, a few hours ago, 12 hours ago, where these two browsers are free. They're normally $3 each. That's that one. Browser 2, uh, I, I don't know where I can start here. In fact, I can't start here. You now know what other browsers there are to available if you want to play. Dragon Go is a browser which has some sort of uh, voice inputting recognition. So if you wanted to use voice more, that's worth playing with. Web Offline is a way of browsing, saving your results so that if you have no internet connection, you can still access them. I think I'm going to not mention anything else there. DuckDuckGo seems very popular in some schools. Browse, browsers that run Flash. iSwifter, Skyfire, Puffin Free, and Rover. These browsers will run Flash files, but how they're working, and I'm aware here I'm talking about it rather than demonstrating it, which is really bad, but the time is means I'm going to have to do that. Um, what really happens is that you're not looking at the flash in your browser. What is happening is it's connecting to a browser in the States on somebody's computer, in that company's uh, computers, and it, the flash is playing on their computers and mirroring to your iPad. Therefore, it's slow. And if you're living outside of the States, you may not even be able to download these because they're only... Uh, so let me um, just... Let me just uh, I must, uh, I'm not seeing all of my chat. Let me. Oh, Dot, you're using Rover and iSwifter. And is it quick? Peggy, I think what to do here is uh, there is, in the back channel tool, there is a link to a screen, to this screenshot, I think. And if not, I'll make sure that this screenshot, I'll maybe Twitter it, or, and I'll put a link to these screenshots in that back channel tool after I've finished. Um, I think that Flash is going away now anyway. Let me, let me mention a few other things here. Um, let me look at Safari. Because I want to mention some functionality in Safari. So Safari, I think, is probably the most used browser on the iPad. But I want to mention something about the... I'm not going to tell you how to do it. I'm raising awareness. Something about the bookmarks bar here. Now, I actually, in the bookmarks bar, you can run programs. For instance, I'm on some weird web page here. What web page am I on here? Oh, this is a review about the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 review. And it's a very complicated URL here. But on the bookmark, I've actually put a piece of script which will do something rather than just be uh, a bookmark. For instance, there's one there. It says Google URL shortener. Now, if I touch that with my finger, remember that the pointer is on the MacBook. It's not on the iPad. Uh, but if I click that with my finger, on my iPad, what it's done is it's taken that long URL that was there, and let me make it bigger, and it's done a short URL. <laughs> I think the thing to do is we either have another session or just Google it. How do you do that? How do you put a Google shortener on here? Um, I've got uh, another button here for polling. I've got another button here which if I click on it, it will create a QR code for this URL here. Um, what else? Twitter. I've got a button here which I, if I click it, it will bring up a Twitter window and Twitter automatically. So the tool, the, the, the 
favourites bar the, here can can actually run little programs um, there. Is there anything else on here? Actually, it's all to do. It's inside here somewhere. Is how to do it. But best Google it. So how can you set up functionality on here rather than just bookmarks? So if I click on there, I can email myself. Peggy, okay, yeah. But keep in mind, these are not just links. These are actual little JavaScript programs which will do stuff. I'm close to the end. I'm just going to do two things. One is I'm going to look at Google. I have Google Chrome. And it looks like Google Chrome. So there's Google Chrome. And let me, so forget that. We're not, I'm not going to go through it. But this icon here, which just says Google, is perhaps uh, a more useful type of... I don't, know whether, I don't know whether to call it a browser or you call it a search engine. First of all, it's heavily into voice. Search for Australia. Now, you can't hear it, but it's actually reading something back to me. So there's that aspect. So voice is very big there. And the other thing I want to uh, highlight here is this thing at the bottom. If I touch it and pull it up, the whole screen changes. And this is bringing up Google's latest toy, which is calling notes. Uh, oh, sorry, it's calling cards. And these are cards. And they're going to be super intelligent and know who you are, what you do, where you're going, uh, if you've got an appointment by looking in your calendar. And it's going, you're going to find over the next months and years that this card aspect is going to grow and become uh, a bit frightening that it's Big Brother watching you. So that's that one. Now, I mentioned, thus I'm going to finish off. Oh, I hate going over time. Uh, I'm going to finish off, and I said that, that I uh, would show you how to make what looks like an app from your browser. So let me bring up uh, Safari. I'm trying to check something here. OK, let me bring up Safari. And let me go to, um, what should I go to? OK, I'm going to go to this school website. Now, in fact, in two weeks today, I'll be in this school. And this is a school I'm hoping uh, Peggy will Skype in and I'm and watch out and I'm going to twist your arm for something about this. So I'm going to be in this school, which Moodle. Oh, I don't want to go to their Moodle site. I want to go to the school. So let me, let me delete that. Let me delete that. And I'm going to delete all of that. And delete that. And delete the full stop. Let's go to the school. Now you could do this on any website. So this is the school website uh, that I've been in two weeks today. Yeah, I'm mirroring my iPad now. Uh, so I, it's a bit weird. I'm I've got my iPad on my right hand side, and it's mirroring to my MacBook Pro. Uh, so I'm moving left to right, and I'm using my pointer from my MacBook Pro, and I'm touching the screen on my iPad. It drives you crazy. Let me show you this, uh, this little trick. Uh, I want to turn this website into what looks like an app. <laughs> this is going to blow your mind. It's so easy to do. I'm going to click here. And what can I do? I can mail this page. I can IM it. I can Twitter it. I can Facebook it. I can Weibo it. Weibo is the Chinese equivalent of Facebook. I can print it, I can copy it, I can bookmark it, I can add to a reading list, but there's one more screen. I can add it to the home screen. So I'm in a browser now, and I'm at a particular site, it could be at any site, and I can add this to my home screen. So let me click on here, my finger. <laughs> 
and it's saying, what do I want to, you see it's created what looks like an icon, and you can put anything you want here, and I'm going to put, I'm going to leave it as faith, no, I'm going to put it as FT school, I'm going to call it that, <laughs> can you see what my spell checker has just done, it's changed it to fat school, it's not very complimentary, FT school, and then I'm going to, <laughs> thank you very much, I'm going to click on add, and what it's done is it's created what looks like uh, an app, uh, and it's, it says on the home page, actually it's, you can move it to any page, it's a, really, it's a bookmark. What I could do now, if I, if I touch that with my finger, it opens up wherever it was linked to. And that, can, that has the potential of saving you an awful lot of time. Because what you can do on your iPad or your iPhone, your iOS device, you can have not just icon, uh, apps, you can have bookmarks which look like apps that send you off to maybe a YouTube video in a browser, anything that's in a browser. Um, and I think that's pretty marvellous, that. It's, and it's quite good on how it actually designs the app as well. I've done it in several places. I did it, let me go right back to the back. I am going to, this is the last thing I think I will cover here. Um, I did it at the weekend. Last weekend, I created a folder here called Share... I'm hesitating because Penny's just written about time and date conversion site. Actually, that would be a good one. Because um, this actually, having this bookmark creator, which looks like an app, saves you that hassle of having to go to a browser and then actually searching or finding it in the browser. It saves a lot, potentially saving a lot of time. But this is a new folder I created at the weekend called sh the Sharing Economy. The Sharing Economy. And this is an app which was to a conference two weeks ago in London called Le Web, which was all about the sharing economy and how people are sharing things now, um, like zip cars where you can just get in a car and, and drive it away and use it for an hour and all sorts of things like that, sharing your house, sharing your electric drill, all sorts of things like that. But they had a really great, that's their official web, but they also had a YouTube channel and that's just a link to the browser where the YouTube channel is. And that's another one. Uh, this is a link to a PowerPoint about the sharing economy running in a browser in slideshare.net. Um, I think that was another website called We Share. We as in yes in French. Peggy, I'm going to stop. I'm so sorry I've gone over 10 minutes and that's atrocious. Chris, not a choice. You have so much to share. You're always so generous with your time. Um, so can we all please give him a clapping hand? I could have sat here but I don't know how much longer. So Chris, when you don't have your computer meet again, <laughs> love to have you back and get you talk to us again. Um, I had no idea we could do so many things. Um, I think this would be great to teach our students too, so I'm, I'm going to go home with lots of things going round in my head. <laughs> so I'm just going to, if it's okay, I'll just quickly show the whiteboard and maybe we could just stay for a couple of minutes at the end in case there's um, some quick questions for you. But thank you Chris so much for a fantastic session. You're always so generous with your resources and sharing the time. Um, the amount of time you must be uh, just browsing, looking around and getting it all together. Um, and thank you everyone for participating. It was great to have this global audience. Uh, just to let you know, there's a three week break now. I'm actually going over to Texas, um, San Antonio for ISTE next week. And then we've got a two week school break. So we'll be back about mid-July. and. Um, if you watch the Tech Talk Tuesday blog or Twitter or the Australian Series blog, you'll find out on there what we might be up to. So let's give Chris an amazing and a big applause, uh, virtual applause, and thank you very much. Maybe we just leave the room open for five minutes in case there's some questions.
So if you do have any, please put them in uh, your in the chat or grab the microphone and ask Chris. Chris, I know there was one because you showed us how we could use our voice. Do you know if it uses uh, multiple languages or is it just for English use? That was a, a question from uh, Gold. I, I, th I think Google is uh, aware that they're a global con country because their voice recognition does recognize certain languages, but not all languages. So I think the only way to do that is to suck it and see, is to try it. Um, maybe one of the best places to go is just to go to Google Translate in any browser and uh, you can speak into that and see what different, you choose your language, which you can choose your inputting language and your outputting language. And it, so that's Google Translate, just search for Google Translate, I think it's translate.google.com. Uh, and it will, you speak in and you choose which language you're speaking in and it will speak out the language you want. But bless their hearts, Google are a global company and, uh, and they do where they, they can. They, they, produce different um, voice recognitions for different tones and, and ch Chinese as well, which is amazing, especially as all the Chinese dialects uh, that there are. It's just it's phenomenal. I, on behalf of, of Siri as well, I should say that, that Apple also have versions of Siri which will work in different languages, but not all languages. Um, Are there any other questions of Chris? Please just grab the mic. Chris, I want to know how you find all these things out. Is it just by researching and playing and exploring? Or is it you go to lots of webinars or conferences? Or how do you actually find all this out? It's a great, great question. I think it's the, it comes straight after what's the meaning of life, I think. It's uh, how do you find stuff? And it's, uh, yeah, you asked the librarian was the answer. To <laughs> Any librarians watching this in the future? Um, the uh, it's it's really good challenge, and I think I'm homing those information literacy skills because that's what we're talking about, and these are skills that it's really important that this that the students pick up. They don't just go to Google and put one word in. They go to different places, and what strategies do they use? Um, Shamble, I see that Peggy's put shambles.net there. Actually, I'm fortunate enough that a lot of people put suggestions into shambles and until I approve them, they don't actually get posted. That forces me to look. Uh, so uh, lots of people there are, are recommending things. But my main trick, I think, is uh, my main strategy for information literacy is is it comes back to that, what's now an old term, is my personal learning network. Who are the people that you follow? Um, where, where do you go looking for information or do you have information pushed to you? At the moment, I'm getting a lot from Scoopit because Scoopit sends me, I follow several people on Scoopit. I follow some people that really keep good Scoopits on mobile learning and iPads. And what happens is once a day I get an email from Scoopit which has maybe three posts that people have put up there. And they're usually really good posts because the people I've chosen are people that have a track record. They post good stuff and they seem to find out early. So my best way is, is by following people let other people do that searching and find that new stuff for you, I think is really good. Very rarely will I just go surfing at random. Rarely will I do that. But uh, it's, a, it's a problem. And how many children are suffering and adults are suffering from internet addiction because they're spending all of this time? And also, um, you know, mobile devices mean you're connected 24-7 and I'm not sure whether that's a good idea although I suffer from that. I have a, a, a mobile phone and my iPad and, and there's a potential of being connected 24-7 but I, I sometimes question whether that, you know, get a life. Let's, let's go out for a swim. The temperature here is 30, 
5 degrees C, it's blue sky, uh, and I did go for a swim this morning actually, but uh, you know, do we want to be connected all the time? And there's a wonderful cartoon, and um, which I've got somewhere, uh, a wonderful cartoon where mum says to the young boy, a young son says, look, go outside and play, and he does. But the Wi-Fi actually goes into the garden, so he's just sat there in the garden with his mobile device in the same way as you would be inside. Peggy, you no, know, I won't be at uh, ISTE, unfortunately. It's just, you know, there's a, there's, um, there's a bus. There's no bus from Chiang Mai, and it's uh, quite, quite expensive, actually, to get there as well if nobody's sort of sponsoring me. And I'm also off in two weeks to, down, into, down to Australia. Uh, I leave, I'll be there just two weeks today. I know that's after ISTE, but the jet lag from Misty back to here, I hate jet lag. Chris, we've just yeah. got one last question. Both Peggy and I want to know, how did you get the folders on your toolbar? So Dream of a Show is how you drag some of your bookmarks into the folders. Have you got a quick few minutes just to tell us that? Um, on the, in the iPad or on my Google Chrome browser? I think it was on, oh, well, I was talking about the Google Chrome browser. Peggy, which one were you referring to? Yeah, so we're both on the browser, Chris. Just on Google Chrome browser? Okay, let me yes. show you. Okay, share. I think you're going to kick yourself when you see this. I think all I do is I put the pointer over and I right click and there's a button, now, if that's grey for you, you have to take my word for it, there's an option there which says add folder. It's grey, okay, the one of the options, so you just right click, I think this is the same on, uh, on all the other browsers as well, I think you right click on the bookmark bar, uh, on, on those bookmarks there on that bar and right click and one of the options is to add a, add a, brow, add a folder. And Chris, can you just rename the folder, or do you give it a name when it pops out? No, you can re you can rename it. You can, in fact, if I double click on one up here, see what happens. To me. Yeah, there's a, oh, it's grayed out for you again. But when I right click on the folder, one of the options is rename, and you can drag them around. You can move them. You can move one folder inside another folder, and you can create folders inside folders. And it's just a right click. It's the same on Windows and on uh, Mac. Mm, that's fabulous, Chris. Thank you. Well, I am the aware of the time. And thank you. I think it's after midnight for you. But sorry, Chris, go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, it's, you, I kick myself sometimes. I, it was only a few months ago that I learned that you could actually put folders on the, on the app bar at the bottom of your iPad. And as soon as that I discovered that, that saves an awful lot of time because I put a folder on the bottom of my iPad, which only has, what, six, room for six apps, but you can put a folder there, and I put my most favorite apps inside that folder, so they're on every page on my iPad. Um, and sometimes it's the simplest thing that somebody points out to you one time, and you go, oh, of course, you know, why didn't I do that? Okay, well, thank you again, Chris. I think you've given us so much to think about, to explore, to try. Thank you for sharing those wonderful resources. Uh, that will make it so much easier to be able to explore further. So I'm going to stop the recording now. Thank you again for coming and Chris for a great session. Hope to see you sometime soon. And enjoy Australia, Chris. You will be about oh, eight hours away from where I live. But South Australia and the Barossa Valley is just beautiful. So enjoy.